everything right and if if Geelong had had some of the uh, fortitude that all every St Kilda player got they perhaps might be playing a little bit better but uh, the fortitude every every yeah. intestitude is it? Intestinal <laughs> fortitude. Well, Barker is. Uh, well Barker should have been overseas yesterday because he wasn't playing that well at all I don't know I think he must have an injury something wrong with his uh, foot Teeth. I think. Teeth. Well, yeah. Of course the will of the wrist uh, Bartlett joined some of the immortal players of league football who've kicked over 700 goals. Well spoken. Thank you. Well, and uh, there's well, Keel again. There's not very many of us left. <coughs> name you have them. Name them, Well, I'll name one that's kicked over. Because Mark Lee's out of the side. There's Wiley again. He's playing a great game. Looking there for Taylor. I think he's put it through again. It's the boot fell over. He's got a three for a goal. Goal number three to one. So, uh, at the moment, it's uh, Fitzroy. Nine goals. Martello almost marks it one-handed. Landy. Wood. Wood takes the mark. Half-back flank. Gives the hand pass over to Shan. A late inclusion in the Richmond side, and Shan boots it up to the centre wing. Great comeback by the Tigers, though. Now for the umpire to ball it up on Richmond's half fourth on about 75 metres out from their goal. Knocked away by Rendell. Straight to Rollings. Shepherded by Shan. Should kick this little ex-West Australian. He's had a great season. One of the favourites for the Brownlow. And that's a goal. So it's 19-14, 128 Richmond for Fitzroy. 13, 12, 90. A half forward, but it's all new. New, it's in a halfback. Wide out looking for Bacanara, pursued by Shan. Bacanara takes the mark. It'll be 15 metres against Shand. Very indirect play. He's a long way away. He's uh, about as far as away he can get on a half forward flank on the MCC. Kicks it down towards the pocket. Will Michael Tuck will go the leap. Oh, how well done. How beautifully done over the top of a mark for a kick like that. Through green it goes. On to Ede. Ablett tries to flick it up off his boot into his hands. Waitman intercepts. And does well. Back he goes for support with Malthouse. Might take it. Can't make it. Shand. Lose it. Was legged. And Shand will take the free kick on half-back flank. It was a strange side of the ground to go. So often Richmond in the past have kicked to Brian Wood's wing. And, uh, time towards period. Now here's Shand from half-back flank. Over the wing. Cloaked from the back. A half-forward. Comes to the front, nest of Hawks there, Loveridge a snap for goal, Matthews and Shand one on one. Shand, a great mark. Malthouse with the old punt, puts Carlton into attack, McClure from behind. Oh, what a mark, that's a tremendous mark. Well, at times he's almost got too much courage for his own good. And he stood his ground then superbly. 20 metres out. 25 perhaps. Richmond leading by two points, 33 to 31. Lee rucking well. Brown knocks it onto Carlton's half forward line. McClure to Glascott, to Ashman, the Carlton small brigade running right now. Into the goals. Great piece of play by Carlton. Oh. And the Blues lead by uh, centre field, and Mark Hu chips in. Short again from Carlton. Looking for Johnston. Shan's done a good job on him today, though. But Johnston thought about playing on. But he's almost within kicking distance. Johnston about 60 metres out. Tries for the short pass. Mark Buckley. Wearing a different Guernsey this year. Number 10. And I think from memory. Carlton Small Brigade running everywhere and chipping in as Sheldon. And a slight disagreement between Shan and Mark Buckley. Nothing in that. The umpire having a few words to say, though. There's a free kick here. Ball knocked out by Duel. A good one over there to Austin. One of Carlton's very good players today. Oh, nearly a free kick uh, to Shan, but the umpire didn't spot that. Picked up by Story off the top of the back. Driven down there towards Taylor and Reed. Uh, oh, Taylor got under that. This allows Reed to take the mark. Reed had a bit of a lapse of uh, concentration in that uh, second quarter allowing Taylor to get two goals a good mark there to Johnson again Shan had been doing a very good job but Johnson's looking better this quarter a hand pass coming out the to left half forward Kane goes the spoil gets it down or intended to get it down to Jess 
who comes out of it one-handed miraculously to Shan from centre half back over the top. That's it, play on. Finally, it's back to half. The short pass coming out, but there's Shand in the way. Bumbles the mark, but recovers well for a young fellow. And the ball kicked wide out towards the wing position. Dool coming in. Certainly driving the nail right into the coffin here. Johnston, he's come into his own late in the match. A lot of attention. And can be credited with inspiring Melbourne to its 19-point win over Richmond. It was brilliant skipper Robbie Flower. He ruled the skies and kicked five goals in one of his finest performances for the way. A chance once again as the handball shot back, a shot in towards full forward. Beasley is there, can't complete the mark. Play on is the call, and it's taken over the line. My word, the Footscrow fans rising every time that ball is pushed down, and there's trouble for Richmond. Looks as though Baum has some problem with the left ankle as that one goes straight down the throat from Mark Lee three straight goals, a great start to the dogs, Lee takes it out, his handball smothered well Shand in there for Richmond can't get the ball clear and the umpire decided that they had time and he'll bounce the ball still on the half forward line for Footscray very little breeze here it's normal, whatever breeze there is tends to swirl at the MCG so from centre backs, Richmond a great fight back in this quarter. Lee couldn't quite get to it. Royal puts the ball high in the air. Shan came in. Mm. Pop one too high from Brian Cordy. And so Wayne Shan will feel a lot better now he knows he's got the free kick. Great medicine, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing better. <laughs> Shan now. It's a nice kick to half forward. Roach is up. It's punched away by Kellett. Taken by up. Welsh. Luck for Matthew Wall because I do believe that he was trying to take possession of the ball and uh, in doing so actually there was no doubt it's a free kick but uh, re really Wall was trying to go take the ball well Jimmy Edmund directly in front point blank Mark Lee long kick forward Kane has the ball punched away there by McPherson he recovers beautifully then a quick hand pass towards Williams gets the favorable bounce dummies Whoa. runs back into trouble too long he got through two, but not the third. And Greg, it's Greg Strong. The wings, both the, the brothers, Neil and Brian, swapping wings. Short pass. Shan gets into the back of his opponent. Not very happy, but nonetheless, it's right. And it's Steve McPherson from centre wing. In towards centre half forward. Strong punches it away from behind. Comes back to Strong again, kicks the ball off the ground. Straight towards Shan, the hand pass into the centre to Palm. Palm breaks past the tackle, a hand pass to Waitman, tackled high, but called play on. Desperate footballers, Royal comes out with it for Footscray. Drives it out towards the half-back flank. Shan leading in the race for the ball, can he tap it back? Gets a quick hand pass towards Roach, onto Wall. Wall straightens up, hooks it towards half-forward. Mervyn Kane at the back, cuts the half-forward line. Coming out with Strawn, couldn't take the mark. Williams dives in after it. Players desperately, as Be Beasley comes out with it, loses it, crawling on his hands and knees was Barn. Couldn't come out of pushing the back to Beasley. This may be the one to set things up as Beasley, within kicking distance, he's only 35 metres out from goal. Beasley has kicked three goals, Simon Beasley. And the former Western Australian now foots. the half back by Mark Lee up in front. Can't take the mark. In goes Sartori. Parrish. Conlon, the ball doesn't sit for him. Take it away by Morris Rioli. Stage of the game, going for a short pass, which wasn't good. Quinlan taps it back over to Conlon. He should have kept going straight through. It's been taken away by... He'd be quite happy to see that ball go out of bounds. There's Lee getting it down to the ground. Players charging after it in that back pocket position. The umpire's picked out a free kick, and it will go to the way of Wayne Shand. Shand in the back pocket on that left foot. He kicks towards centre wing. Packer players are there. That's a good mark over the back, and it will go Fitzroy's way to Peter Francis. He played very well last week, Francis. Didn't waste the ball at all. We'll bring this one now. He's gone for a short pass. He's found Conlon. Once again, gets value out of his kick. Not that he gained a great deal of territory. He didn't. He only gained about 20 metres. Mickey Conlon could not score from there. He'll be hopeful for Quinlan down in the goal square, I'd imagine. Now he's going to back himself. Here he comes. Makes the bounce. He tries to beat the ball and forced out of bounds. Free kick. He was tackled too high, a little bit of luck for the oh, well, I think he is very lucky to get that, but now he's off for the ball. He snaps at the goals at the high drop, punt it, Swiggy, this could be a goal. Oh. It is a great goal for Michael Cunningham. That's a team that's 
Uh, Richmond brought in some new fellas for their first game. Uh, Conlon this year, uh, Foley, uh, Shan was in for his first game also this year, and Poole. How did they all perform? Yes, uh, I think they'll get two or perhaps three out of that crowd that could hold on to their places there. And uh, it gave them a breath of fresh air too, the Richmond side. They had the enthusiasm. They were going in pretty hard for the ball after a bad one against Carlton. They were certainly looking for the ball on, sa on Saturday, and uh, they looked well. They fitted it in nicely. Jack uh, Roach.